A very warm welcome to you as you join us on this episode of Tax Matters in this beautiful week of Nigeria's 60th independence anniversary. Yes, Nigeria is 60 as an independent nation. We have gone through beautiful moments and a few low moments. There have been highs and lows, but we still remain strong and together. We felicitate with President Muhammadu Buhari and the entire citizenry of Nigeria. Happy birthday, Nigeria. One of the major things that keep a nation standing on its feet is revenue. Majorly, revenue from taxes. In recent time, there have been improvements in processes and procedures at the level of the Federal Inland Revenue Service and at many of the 36 states. The improvement in processes and procedure at the FRS has resulted in improvement in collection. Of course, what the FRS collects is for the entire country, shared every month at FAC. This was the subject of the speech of Mr. Muhammad Nami on the occasion of the visit of the board of the FRS to the Honorable Federal Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning in Abuja on the 15th of September 2020. The board members who had assembled for an induction course scheduled to commence the following day had decided to pay a coxy call on the minister. As a board, we have been working hard to ensure that we are able to provide some food on the table of FAP and some other agencies that will collect money or tax revenue on their behalf, e.g. needs the, the education trust fund. If you recall, uh, the Honorable Minister, that in the FAP of about three, four, five months back, Federal Inland Revenue Service has been contributing about 65-70% on a monthly basis to the monies that are shared at FAC among the three tiers of government. You also notice that the price of oil has actually gone down just to reflect what is obtainable at the international market and at a point in time productions were done and there were no buyers, the off takers were not there to buy. So that is impacting negatively on what we are doing to the extent that though the figures are not out yet officially, the total collection by FRS last month was in the total sum of 400 and 90 billion. And uh, out of this 490 billion, only 52 billion come from petroleum profit tax. The difference is non oil. So we've done a lot of reforms, and those reforms are actually giving us good results. In her response, the Honorable Federal Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, attested to the assertions of Mr. Nami. Let me um, congratulate the chairman, the board, and the management of FRS for the very apparent improvement in revenue performance. It's uh, really a good story to tell that despite the decline in the revenues coming from crude oil, that the total revenue of government still did not suffer very, very significantly. And this is arising from the increased efficiency that your team has brought to bear in the collection of taxes, but also the increase in the VAT rate and the realization of stamp duties, and most importantly, the monetization of FAC, which is now being done at the iron in Indo rate. So that helped to show up the revenue. We did see months in which 
uh, like you explained, the non-oil revenue performance was almost 60-70% of the total revenue. This indicates that the effort at diversifying revenue from oil and gas is also yielding result. When we have a situation where consistently for a number of months now, the non-oil revenue is higher than the oil revenue. That is really what we want to achieve. Not that we don't want oil revenue to go up, but we want non-oil revenue to continue to improve in the manner that we have seen in the last uh, couple of months. I want to urge you to um, keep up the good work that you're doing, but to also do more. We are in the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning available to support you in whatever way you think we can provide support so that you can do more than you are able to do now. We're not just your supervising ministry, we're supposed to be an enabler for you. So anything that you require that needs to be done through us, you just need to let us know and then we discuss it and look at the best way possible to, to do so. Also present at the Costco was the permanent secretary of the ministry, Mr. Mahmoud Issa, who made a request. There's a lot more that you need to do. One issue is uh, stakeholder engagement, particularly the taxpayers. I, I think uh, try and do more in that regard so that people understand some of these, uh, some of these issues. Taxpayer engagement, taxpayer enlightenment and education. That is our forte on tax matters and we dare say we are doing a good job at it. But then, communication is a two-way affair. And so we went to town to fill the post of the public. How can we diversify the Nigerian economy away from the current overdependence on oil revenue? Well, Nigeria economy is mono, uh, mononistic in nature because we all look into the revenue from oil. And that has, that has been very unfortunate, if I may say. Before the uh, advent of oil, we had agriculture. You have the cocoa pyramid in the in the west. You have the granite pyramid in the in the north. We had everything going for us. People, there is no air mass influx into the city. People stay back and contribute to the economy of the nation. But with the advent of oil, the farmers were abandoned. The rural people were abandoned. So the rural people had to now start chasing what they need to survive at the urban center. And everybody now is now, is now you are studying business management. Nobody wants to read agriculture. If you say your child is reading agriculture, people say, what? But that is the resources God has given to us. We are endowed. Have you seen, have you wondered if you are traveling between here to Ibadan? And you see the kind of thick forest we have? They, these are not plantations. These are just natural resources that God has endowed with. And it is all seasons from January to December. You'd never see any dry desert along Lagos to Ibadan Road. Is it not instructive for government to know that if they put emphasis on agriculture, that the economy of the country will boost? So we need to diversify our economy to agriculture and begin to let our youth to imbibe the spirit of productivity. For instance, the, the technical schools have practically been wiped up. If somebody is a, is a mechanic now, people look down on him. We are, he's very productive. So the, the, people may begin, the country must begin to orientate the curricular at school so that people begin to look at areas where they can function properly and the economy of the country will boost. I think first of all the most important thing to me is first of all guarding securing the country. Security is very important. If you if you can if you if you fix the security issue then you get investors in. If you if if there is insecurity in a, in a place there, there cannot be investors. Do you understand that? Uh, if you take Dubai uh, as an example, it's a, it's a tourist, it's one of the like, um, most toured countries in the world. And it's because there is peace. When there is peace in a country, then you can invest in tourism. Nigeria could be something like that. Uh, let's be honest. Yes, in Nigeria, have 
hundred times more resources than let's say the top economy Germany yes in, in, in Europe Germany don't have oil they don't have gold they don't have nothing yes but they are top economy if we now uh, united um, this UAE 20 years ago 90 percent of um, revenue came from oil now 90 percent comes from tourism why just just because they used oil to raise up country so I believe the uh, proper way of using natural resources would rise up in Nigeria from the bottom line. I think we have to focus on tech. Like, we will we'll focus, the government should, as much as possible, give grants and encourage the youth to go into technology. That, that's a good source of income for us, as we can see in other developed countries like US. Tech, the, the biggest companies now in the world, they're all technology companies. So aside, aside the agriculture too, you know, before the, before the discovery of oil in Nigeria, our culture was like the major, the cocoa. So I think they have to focus on those farmers, those are the cocoa, the, the other crops that we can export. Because that's how we can, that's the best way, size for more agriculture and youth. We have, to, we have to invest in our youth, I think. They have a lot of brain power that we can, yeah, they can generate good incomes for us. We look at content first, production here. You realize that basically almost everything we are using here, majority, in fact, majority of them have been imported. We depend mainly on things we bring in. If we can uh, support local contents here, especially in agricultural, agricultural sector, then you talk about the um, information technology, that's the IT. There are a lot of people who are doing programming here, who are producing one thing or the other that benefits the country. Go to the um, University of Nigeria and Soka, you see most students there who are doing very wonderful things. That's why you have Silicon Valley in California. Most of the items, ITs that even Nigerians are depending on, that are coming from there, we are being done by students in the schools. They get it. So we have to look at how to encourage our local contents here. Most of the food we do produce here, for instance, there was a time we, we have news about, uh, what's it called? Uh, Soup, stew, was being imported from abroad. A goosey soup was being imported too. I mean, does that make sense? Why would that happen when we have everything, every content that those, every ingredient that was used for that soup is here? Why must we do that? What's wrong with us? We have to change that psych, that mentality, and believe that whatever we produce here can equally bring more money for us. Ask yourself: We have a lot of things we are producing here, but how can our money? be 500 equal to one of their own why because we depend solely on what they are doing there instead of there is no how we are giving something else we are just consuming do you provide goods and services then you must answer these important questions are you registered for VAT do you charge VAT on the goods and services you provide do you keep records of all your transactions do you file VAT returns do you remit VAT collected to government coffers if your answer to any of these questions is no, then you are breaking the law. The law demands total compliance. Therefore, you must register for VAT. You must charge VAT on goods and services. You must file VAT returns. And you must remit all VAT collected on behalf of government within 21 days to the bank nearest to you. To do otherwise is a crime punishable everywhere in the world. VAT is prescribed by the law. Do the right thing. Collect and pay that. This message is from the FIRS. It pays to pay your tax. We also asked, how do we expand the tax base? Um, I think um, generating more revenue from ta taxation, I think you mean taxing more people. That is um, taxing the, the, the majority of the Nigerian workforce. Now, there are a lot of Nigerians who are working in some capacity or the other, but cannot be identified. You can't even tax them because you can't identify them. Now, in more um, developed countries, it's what we call uh, um, digital identity. Like this national ID card, national identification number. The moment you can identify everybody in the country, then you can tax anybody in the country. You can do every single thing because if you have your, um, in the U.S. is a um, social security number, but the moment you have your, um, in Nigeria, your national identification number, then you're good to go and so we i think we should be looking um we should be looking at the to the direction of first of all getting everybody in nigeria or getting the majority of 
of people in Nigeria um, registered with the um, NIMSI, that's a um, National Identity Management Commission. If you get people registered there and people are now traceable, then you can tax people. Then you can tax people. Like I, I myself, I just got my tax identification number coincidentally just yesterday. But that, but just yesterday because I, I needed to to get payment. I'm a freelance. I needed to get payment from a particular company, and they told me they, uh, they can't pay until I have my tax uh, identification number. And so I went, and it was I was shocked actually. I, I got it in 10, 10, 15 minutes. It was that fast. I was shocked. Like this is Nigeria, and I can give them a kudos for that. And um, this is at, at FCTIRS somewhere in Gariki. I did that yesterday, and I can give them kudos for that. But my my major answer, like I said, is if you can identify everybody, you can tax everybody. I believe first people must have money to pay taxes. And if people will have jobs, of course it's much more easier to tax them. The way we can uh, generate more revenues from taxes is by creating job opportunities for the masses. These days our youth has nothing they are doing. Many of them are graduates, but they don't have work. But if there will be m much job opportunities mostly for our youths and they have engaged to what they rate because Nigeria youth I believe that Nigeria youth are capable of doing anything you ask them to do. If government can provide job opportunities for whosoever that graduates immediately to get work, I believe no matter the expansion or uh, expanding of uh, the tax, they will pay. Well first of all, tax comes from the people like from businesses. With their increasing businesses in Nigeria, more tax will come in. When, when the business, when they employ people, government collects tax from the employees as well. So the best thing is encourage, encourage business startup, encourage startups in Nigeria, basically. Let more people start businesses, encourage them, incentivize them with tax breaks, at least in the beginning, and loans. So encourage them to grow. When they grow, they can easily pay their taxes. When people see the result, of what they are paying for, it will encourage a lot of people to pay more. But you have to look for ways to make sure that the people who are paying this tax, we've said it earlier, they are getting the worth of that money. If they can get the worth of that money, then what stops them from paying for it? Tax men and women have their jobs cut out for them. And talking about tax men and women, they include tax administrators men and women working at revenue authorities at federal and state levels, as well as tax practitioners, those plying their trade as tax advisors in the private sector. All of them belong to the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, CITN, the only body statutorily empowered to regulate the practice of taxation in Nigeria. You must be aware that the CITN organizes the annual task conference every year, usually in the month of May. But due to COVID-19, the 2020 edition of the annual task conference has had to be put on hold. We have good news for you. The annual task conference is holding after all, as you will hear presently from our guests. Welcome to our guest corner. We have important guests in the house. Dr. Titi Fowoko is the chairman of the Annual Task Conference Committee of the CITN. And Mrs. Lizzie Adibanjo is the secretary. Ladies, you're welcome to Tax Matters. To what do we owe this August visit? We're just here to talk about the Annual Task Conference for 2020. Uh, it's a conference that should have happened since April. But we all know what happened to Nigeria, the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, we are the verge of the conference when everybody was locked down. So it's, we are just revamping it. We are bringing it up again, repackaging it. And that's why we are here, just to tell you that it's not cancelled. It was postponed and it's here now, live and direct. So when is this annual task conference taking off? Uh, it's going to start on uh, Wednesday, 4th of November and we'll, it will end on the, um, Friday, 6th of November, 2020, and we're having it live in Lagos. Uh, it's going to hold at a hotel and suits uh, from 5th and 6th. On the 4th, we're going to come in for the registration, on-site registration. Uh, then we have the main conference, and we have a gala night that will also finalize it. Interesting. What's the idea behind the theme of, the, of this year's conference? 
you will bear with me that recently there have been a lot of things in, on tax arena for Nigeria. Uh, quite a lot of things have happened. I know on tax matters, we even have cases of um, uh, giving us the new regulations. A number of things have happened. Nigeria is following the order of things. Uh, so we now feel that it's better for us to advise the government on how taxation can contribute to economic competitiveness. We want to make sure that Nigeria is attractive to investment. And we believe that taxation has a, a long way to go. Uh, you, your tax system determines how people will embrace your economy. It also determines how ease of business will be ensured. So these are all the things that have made us to come up. We look at the Africa Free Trade uh, Agreement as one of the things I'll be discussing. We're looking at digital taxation as one of the things I'll be discussing during the conference. We're also looking at how do we make our environment attractive to investment. So these are things that are well packaged. Uh, we're not just stopping at that. We believe that our members are cut across administrators, practitioners, and those who are in the industry. So we want to see how we can have a nexus where they all meet and they, we all share together and come up with um, a communicate that government can use to uh, tailor the economy in the right path. So who are we expecting? Uh, for the purpose of the conference, uh, we're expecting dignitaries uh, because the um, Tax Institute has a national character. So we're expecting the representative from the presidency. We're expecting um, some of our members who are executive governors of Gombe State. We're expecting the chairman of FIRS. And the lead paper is actually going to be uh, delivered by Mr. Olakule Alake, and that is the group, general man uh, group managing director of Dangote uh, Group. So he's going to only give us the lead paper, and we have other resource persons uh, that are technocrats and also uh, big people in the industry who will be sharing their views on how taxation can contribute to economic competitiveness in Nigeria. Okay. Now, Mrs. Adebanja, could you just break down the activities of this annual task conference? The highlight of the conference includes exhibitions by corporate bodies, paper presentations, games and sporting activities, gala nights. And during the gala night, we are going to have national task quiz competition. Okay. So what is required of me if I want to attend this annual task conference? Very simple. You register online. You, like, you register through www.citnevents.org. And if you live or walk around the sectariat, allow us to get your access. You can walk up to the Secretariat, we guide you through the process of registration. Conference registrants are required to pay the sum of 100,000 Naira for members, 105,000 Naira for non-members, 75,000 Naira for those joining virtually, and $500 for foreign delegates. What we've done is to look at legal state rules on COVID-19 protocols. Um, we are not just um, running the conference because it's taking us this long to look at the way things are going. So each conference material comes with the COVID-19 protective um, yes. equipment, uh, things like sanitizers, things like your face mask, um, your normal brochure, for, it's normal for you to have your, your conference back. So we, also, we want to be very conscious of the wave of the coronavirus, so we don't want to breach the rule. We have made provision for online because we know some people may not be able to come down or may not feel so inclined to come down and they want to be part of it from the beginning. So we've given a, 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 a discount on the online participation. If you're coming in fully, you are to pay your 100000 as a member of the institute. If you're a non-member, it's 105000 But because we have people that may want to come online. We've said, okay, you can pay at a discounted price uh, fee of 75000 and then you get your full materials for the conference. And for those non-residents, they can actually have um, uh, $500 for foreign participants who are willing to come for the conference because we believe that the economy would have been opened and they'd be able to, to travel down. So we just try to make sure that we address every aspect and if for, because we know not everybody would be able to come physically, so that's why we bring in the, uh, brought in the flavor for the online participation, which was not in our earlier plan. But like I said, the new normal has made us to repackage everything. Right. We also have activities that has to do with our Society of Women in Taxation. Um, Society of Women in Taxation is 10 years this year, and one of the things they are planning is to have a, a session, a seminar, and some other activities. So it's, it's really loaded. So quite a lot of things are going to happen, and as many as come, they're going to have that is, is first of its kind. 
and we are in Lagos. We've never been in Lagos. We've been outside Lagos, Abuja, Uyo, Calaba, but now life in Lagos. There you are. You should be packing your bags now. First week of November, life in Lagos. It promises to be exciting. See you there. We thank you for watching today's episode of Tax Matters as we once again wish all Nigerians happy 60th Independence Anniversary.